everybody, welcome back to Talking Wolves. We're here for another match preview as Wolves are preparing to have another game. Uh, for the first, feels like the first time in a while at Molyneux Stadium as we take on Strugglers Cardiff City. My name is Dave. Alongside me today, I have got Ewan. Ewan, how's it going, man? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Perfect. Yeah, I'm all good. All good. Um, obviously, Ewan, if people are recognising you, you were the host of this Wolves eSports thing yesterday. How did that go? Yes, um, it was good fun. It was, I think, for everyone involved with the club, it was something a bit different. Nobody mm -hmm. had really tried anything like it before. Yeah. Um, and I know they were trying to be a little bit different to the other ones that had come um, before them. So the Brighton one, the Fulham one, Liverpool, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and it was also the first one that was live streamed. So yeah, it was quite quite a big step, I think, for the club. They were they were happy with it as well. So went well. Yeah. If anyone doesn't understand what esports is, just don't worry about it, all right? Just ignore yeah. that whole bit of the video. <laughs> <laughs> Just skip. <laughs> but uh, as we say, Wolves are going to be preparing to take on Cardiff City at Molyneux Stadium this Saturday. Uh, as we normally do, a quick look back at the Huddersfield game. I know you and you didn't go, uh, no. but me and Matt made the trip over on Tuesday. And what a mistake that, <laughs> that turned out to be. <laughs> uh, if you haven't caught it, we did a little match review uh, about the game. But one of, if not the worst performance that we've seen Wolves have this season. So I'm really hoping the Wolves are going to bounce back this Saturday. Don't want to dwell too much on that Huddersfield result. Uh, but, you know, it's just, just how it is. We're not going to win every game. And somehow... Wolves did still move up a place in the, in the league after yeah, Watford funny, uh, <laughs> Watford uh, lost out to less, uh, to Liverpool, so their goal difference now is worse off than Wolves. Um, but before we kick off, we're looking at the stats. Firstly, I do want to say um, our deepest sympathies to the family of uh, Jay Grosvenor. Um, I know um, me and you and that we actually met this guy uh, once or twice anyway on um, the coaches before. Mm. Genuinely, a, a really d decent guy, guy, really nice yeah. guy. Uh, I think they're planning on doing a minute to applause for him on the 39th minute so if you guys could join in uh, I'm sure that he well he would and his family really appreciate that so uh, I just wanted to, to say that out there first but uh, as normal we're going to move on to the match stats so we're looking at Cardiff City uh, they have to be fair in the, in the Premier League they've won two out of their last five uh, compared to Wolves who've won two drawn two and lost just the one in the last five league games as well looking towards the match stats though uh, Wolves at the moment have lost five of their last, last seven matches against Cardiff winning the other two and of course they lost the reverse fixture back in November Cardiff who won 2-1 at Molyneux last season are looking to win consecutive away league games against Wolves for the first time since February 1988. Wolves have won four of their last five home matches in all competitions, drawing the other one. As many as they had won in the first 12 games at Molyneux this season, winning four, drawing three and losing five. Cardiff have won two of their last four away Premier League games, uh, as many as their first 28 in the competition. Wolves haven't lost consecutive matches in all competitions since November 2018. The last time they lost consecutively was to Huddersfield and then Cardiff. So I suppose that doesn't bode too well uh, for this weekend, Ewan. Uh, Cardiff City, though, they've had a, a strange season. I think at points this season, uh, fans were probably looking at it and thinking, you know, on, on the tight budget that Neil Warnock has spent and the on paper, the playing squad, they've actually done okay so far this season. I think a lot of people uh, uh, were expecting them to be rock bottom at this point of the season, weren't they? Yeah, they did. Um Again, I mean, if you look at someone like Fulham compared to Cardiff, I think, yeah. you know, they spent a lot of money um, and Cardiff didn't really in the summer. But again, Cardiff sort of st stuck with their own team, their own similar style that they played last season. A lot of those players were there last season as well, which I think is a big thing because, you know, we've seen it with our team is we kept that core, you know, that core sort of... Um, you know, keeper. No, sorry, not keeper. But you know, the 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 core know of, the, mean. Yeah, 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 I mean, of the team. Yeah. Um, but it's the same with with Cardiff. So they kept you know Etheridge and, and players like that and Hoylet. And again, they've done okay. They're sitting eighteenth. Um, but yeah, if you compare it to someone like Fulham, who have spent a lot of money, they're they're not doing too badly. But again, they had the tragedy with with the Salah transfer, which was just you know heartbreaking. So I kind of do feel you know sorry for them. Um, you know, as much as you can feel sorry for Neil Warnock. Uh, but yeah, it's um, it really is. It was a sad situation in January, and um, to be honest, I do kind of hope they stay up now because of that. Yeah, uh, they've they well, Neil Warnock has done a fantastic job there. I like yeah, just say yeah, the heartbreaking 100%. situation they had in 100%. January, um, things could have been a lot different for them. Mm. But 
as you say, I think the, the the issue for Cardiff is consistency, and you know they've picked up results, they've grinded out results. Of course, they beat us earlier in the season. They they've did. got results against teams around them, um, but I think their real issue is when they're conceding goals. It doesn't rain; it pours. They concede yeah, an early goal. They're not just losing one or two nil. They're losing four or five nil, and of course, that's the it's difference. The same with Everton, them. though. On you know the other day. Well, of course, yeah, yeah, similar. yeah. And and Cardiff, they're. It's going to come down to a situation where they may go down by goal difference, and for, of course, for them, would be heartbreaking. As we yeah. say, we're we're giving our uh, we're bigging up Cardiff a little bit here because mm. you know I think a lot of people expected them to arguably be one of the worst teams in the league. Okay, they're down there, but they're doing mm. a, a pretty stellar job uh, at, at trying to stay up anyway. And I'm sure that would yeah, have been yeah. the uh, being the plan anyway. They're nowhere near the worst the worst team in the the bottom three at all, are they? You know what I mean? They're, no. I don't, I, don't, I wouldn't put them there. I'd say, you know, they, yeah. I think they've done really well to be honest, given the budget that they had as well. You know, I don't think they've done badly. Well, you look at the, of course, Huddersfield and Fulham at the moment, really struggling as mm. the bottom two. Huddersfield on 14, uh, six of them coming against Wolves, by the way, <laughs> and Fulham on 17 points. God. Cardiff City are eight points ahead of Fulham. So they mm. uh, at the moment, they're not in any real danger of finishing bottom two, and they're only two points uh, adrift of Southampton and Brighton. It's, you know, there's five or well, six points separating 13th and 18th at the moment, and, and that league and that, that bottom little... Uh, tier they've got there could just switch in two or three games so mm. they've still got a chance at the moment I wouldn't give up to uh, just yet but no, as no, I say no. goal difference wise only two teams worse than them are the bottom two um, you know Wolves have got a 30 goal better goal swing than than Cardiff which is a massive massive difference so it's going to be very interesting to see how this one goes yeah well I mean just just to, to you know to to come to that, yeah. I mean, their game against Everton, they had zero shots on target, so it just it does say a lot, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I think you know you've got to be having shots on target, haven't you? Especially at least one or two in a game to not have any. I think we didn't even have any against Huddersfield, did we? No. So no. you know, it's like you say, when it rains, it's, when it rains, it pours. Sorry, so yeah, it's. Uh, I think as well, um, you know, Cardiff are going to be up for this one. They've bit, they were up for both those games last oh, yeah. season. You know, with with a team that gave them a little bit of grief last season, we came up with them. They're really going to want to uh, again prove a point. And but Neil Warnock almost gave a war cry in the interview that against Everton. He knew they weren't good enough. He told the players they weren't good enough. Mm. And I think there'll there probably be six or seven changes from that team um, to come up against Wolves. As Huddersfield did, I think Huddersfield made eight changes yeah. and it really paid off for them. It did work, yeah. So it's going to be interesting to see how he goes. Let's, let's switch over to Wolves, though, Ewan. Okay. Um, obviously, I know you didn't really, well, you weren't able to catch much of the Huddersfield game. Yeah. Uh, but it was a real sort of jaded performance from Wolves. They didn't look pretty and they didn't look at their, their sharpest. <sighs> they, they, we've been playing this sort of 5 3 2 or 3 5 2 recently. Yeah. Um, and it seemed to have worked. One result and and everything's up in the air again. How do you think Nuno is going to approach this game? Do you think again it's just going to be that same lineup, or do you expect to see some changes? Well, I think it's you know it's been brought to everyone's attention that we do struggle against the lower teams, don't we? Um, mm-hmm. I don't know whether that's I, I can't pinpoint it. I don't know whether it's Nuno's um, you know philosophy, the way we play, or we just turn up for those big games. I'm not too sure, but. They really do need to kick up the backside, don't they, for this one? Um, yeah. And I think, did you put a stat on Twitter earlier saying that the last two, the last um, time we lost two consecutive games yep. was Huddersfield and Cardiff? Yep. So yeah, it doesn't bode well, does it? So <laughs> we definitely need to come out strong, come out strong, and just hit them hard in the first ten minutes. You know what I mean? Just as many chances as possible. Play high up the pitch and just really make them, you know, sit back and defend for a little bit. Because I think if we do that, again, the floodgates may open. Well, as you say, we said just when it rains, it pours. We it get does, an early yeah. goal against Cardiff and yeah. that's it. Heads drop and we start scoring goals. And that's got to be key for us. And I think at times that is where we've lacked this season, trying to pin these teams down and get in the early goal. I think we gave Huddersfield too much respect in the last game. We allowed them to have way too much of the ball. Uh, and ultimately, as you said earlier, we didn't have a shot on target against them. Yeah. But do you think, you know, if in this sort of game where ideally, you know, one of the worst defences in the league, Wolves need to attack, do you think this is a reason that Wolves could go back to the 3-4-3? Or do you think Nuno's stubbornness as such is going to make him stick to the that formation that we've uh, been playing the last 
well, last couple of months. Yeah, I think he'll probably stick with it. He probably wants to prove a point that we can play in that formation against the lower teams. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think he'll probably stick with it. But, I mean, on the point of, of tactics and bringing players in, I probably would bring in Adama at some point. I know he didn't play at all um, yeah, against Huddersfield. And yep. It's a big talking point, And I do think he really deserves that chance to play. Oh, I mean, whenever he, he's had these little two to five minute cameos he's done he's, he's done brilliant to do something even against Bournemouth he produced mm. a, a really good cross and positive runs so who knows it'll be interesting to see it'd be mm. great to see him against a team like Cardiff no disrespect to Cardiff great yeah. to see him start get that 90 minutes I know people weren't overly keen with he, he, him being deployed as a striker but who knows I, I think with yeah. the tiredness of Jota and Jimenez or the way they look tired Maybe, you know, these days rest and staying at home now, uh, having a home game may reinvigorate the players, but um, who knows. Mm. So if we're going for a predicted lineup, are you just going to say the exact same team as what we've seen the last few weeks? Yeah, like I said, I think that Nuno will probably want to prove a point. I think, you know, he's had a few critics over the last couple of days about, you know, playing against the the lesser teams in the league with no disrespect. Um, yeah. So I think he will want to want to prove a point. Okay, uh, and if you, well, I'll ask for your score prediction. We do have score okay. predictions uh, from the guys over on Twitter as well. If you don't follow us over on Twitter, link in the description down below at Talking Wolves. But uh, every couple of days before the games, we ask the score prediction. So we have got Liam Bagnall, who thinks it's going to be another tight game. He says 1 0 to Wolves with Jota to score. Uh, Sharma says 3 1 to Wolves, Jota to score within the first 10 minutes, followed by Jimenez and Adama to get the last. Uh, Sam Southall says 1 nil to Wolves. Fraser goes 3-0 Wolves. Cardiff to get two players sent off. Uh, George oh, <laughs> George said Adama to score extra time. 1-0. I'd assume he means stoppage time. Um, yeah. We've got Shiv who says 3-1 to Wolves. Jimenez, Brace, Doherty and Bobby Reed for Cardiff. Very precise. Uh, Danny to said, uh, said 3-0 Wolves. Jimenez twice and Johnny Castro. And Jay Baines said 2-0 to Wolves. Jimenez and Doherty. So uh, quite a few Jimenez and Doherty uh, bets yeah, out there as well. Um, but you and if you've had to stick your neck out on the line and give us a score prediction, what, what do you reckon? I'm going to go 3 1 Wolves. 3 1? Um, yeah, 3 1. I'm going to go Mendes Lang to score for Cardiff. <laughs> <laughs> Is he even playing these days? Well, he played uh, He played against Everton, but he was took off for of Patterson about the 70th minute, I think. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think, Wolves, I think he'll score. Remember, I think last season he scored, didn't he? Yeah, he did, yeah. He scored the one here. Yeah, and then for Wolves, I'm going to go Jota 2. And Ooh. Den Donker won. The Donk. He's going the for the Donk goal. Um, yes. I'm, I've actually been quite negative this week. Um, really? Which is the total opposite for me. I'm, I'm normally an optimist. Um, I've gone 1-1. And Ooh. I've gone Bamba, first goal scorer. So uh, Big soul. Big um, soul. Guys, if you didn't catch us on Twitter, make sure you leave uh, your predictions in the comment section down below. Your thoughts on the match, how you reckon Nuno is going to approach, and if you think Wolves are going to get the three points, make sure you hit the subscribe button if you're new. Hit the like button as well. That always helps us out, and we're going to have loads of post-match content coming up for you. Hopefully, fingers crossed, Wolves get the three points, and we're back to normal, basically. Uh, hopefully, you enjoy the rest of your weekend, though, guys, and we'll see you all very, very soon.